When you conduct a research about a group of people, it's rarely possible to collect data from every person in that group. Instead, we will be selecting a sample. This sample is a group of individuals who will actually participate in the said research. So for today, to help us determine the sample, we will be discussing the different sampling methods or sampling techniques that we can use on our research. First, dapat alamin muna natin yung pagkakaiba between population and sample. When we say population, the population is the entire group that you want to draw conclusions about. While when we say sample, it is the specific group of individuals that you will collect data from. The population can be defined in terms of geographical location. Limbawa, population of the whole Philippines, population of whole province of Cavite, or province of Laguna, then can be defined also in terms of age, income, and many other characteristics. It can be very broad or quite narrow. Maybe you want to make inferences about the whole adult population of your country, or maybe your research will focus on customers of certain fast food, like customers of Jollibee, or customers of McDo, or customers of Wendy's. Or, your research may be about the patients na gumaling sa COVID-19, or mga students ng school nyo. So, it is important to carefully define your target population according to the purpose and practicalities of your project or research. Let's discuss what is a sampling frame. When we say sampling frame, it is the actual list of individuals that the sample will be drawn from. Ideally, it should include the entire target population and nobody who is not part of the population. Example nito, you are doing a research on the effects of mobile games on the academic performance of the students. Yung population mo is yung 1,300 students ng school mo. Yun yung lahat ng sudyante na meron ng school mo. And then yung magiging sampling frame mo is yung school's registrar's database, which is yung list of names and contact details ng lahat ng sudyante ng school nyo. So ibig sabihin, manggagaling yung mga data na kukunin mo doon sa database ng school nyo. So specifically, doon sa school registrar's database. Next one is the sample size. When we say sample size, these are the number of individuals that you will include in your sample. It depends on various factors such as including the size and variability of the population and your research design. So there are different sample size calculators and formulas that you can use depending on what you want to achieve with your statistical analysis. As you can see on our given figure, we have two types of sampling methods. The first type is the probability sampling methods, which is also divided into four types, which is simple random sampling, cluster sampling, systematic sampling, and stratified random sampling. The second type of sampling method is the non-probability sampling methods, and also it is divided into four. The first one is the convenient sampling, then the purposive sampling, the snowball sampling, and the quota sampling. So these are the sampling methods that we will be discussing for today. Let's start first with the first type of sampling method, which is the probability sampling. When I say probability sampling, it involves random selection 
allowing you to make strong statistical inferences about the whole group. Probability sampling means that every member of the population, lahat ng miyembro ng population, ay merong chance na mapili. Kinagamit ito kapag ang research mo ay quantitative research. So let's have the first type of probability sampling which is the simple random sampling. So in simple random sampling, so ganun din naman siya, every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. So your sampling frame should include the whole population, kasali lahat ng miyembro ng population. So to conduct this type of sampling, pwede kang gumamit ng mga tools like random number generators or other techniques that are based entirely on chance. Like for example, draw lots. Nakalagay doon sa box lahat ng names ng pangalan ng population. Then pipili ka doon ng certain number na magre-represent ng iyong sample. So for example, you want to select a simple random sample of 100 students from your school. So you will assign a number to every student in your school's database from 1 to 1,000. Halimbawa, merong 1,000 population. And you will use a random number generator to select 100 numbers. So that is an example of simple random sampling. The next type of probability sampling is the systematic sampling. When we say systematic sampling, it is also similar to random sampling in a sense na uh, every member of the population is listed with a number. Pero mas madali to. It is usually slightly easier to conduct kasi instead of randomly generating numbers, individuals are chosen at regular intervals. Nabawa, all students of the school are listed in alphabetical order. From the first 10 numbers, you will randomly select a starting point. Halimbawa, ang starting point mo is number 6. So from number 6 onwards, you will select every 10th person on the list. So number 6, kung sino man yung student na pang number 6, sunod, merong 10 na interval, so pipiliin mo yung pang number 16. So the first person na napili mo is yung pang number 6, sunod pang number 16, mag-add ka lang ng another 10, pang number 26, pang number 36, 46, 56, and so on. And with that, you will end up with a sample of 100 people. The third type of probability sampling is the stratified sampling. So when we say stratified sampling, it involves dividing the population into subpopulation that may differ in important ways. It allows you to draw more precise conclusions by ensuring that every subgroup is properly represented in the sample. So para magamit mo tong klase ng sampling method na to, you will divide the population into subgroups called strata based on the relevant characteristics such as kung ano bang gender nila, age range nila, then income bracket, or yung job role nila. So based on the overall proportions of the population, ikakalculate mo if how many people should be sampled from each group. Then, you will use random or systematic sampling to select a sample from each subgroup. Halimbawa na lang ay mayroong 1,000 na estudyante sa school nyo. 250 doon ay grade 7, while 200 doon ay grade 8, tapos 150 doon ay grade 9, at 400 ay grade 10. Tapos gusto mo ma-ensure as a researcher na yung sample mo ay well represented or well distributed for each grade level. So, ang gagawin mo is pagsasamasamain mo yung population into four strata based sa kanilang grade level. Then, gagamit ka ng random sampling. The last type of probability sampling is called the cluster sampling. So, in cluster sampling, it involves dividing the population into subgroups 
but each subgroup should have similar characteristic to the whole sample. Instead of sampling individuals from each subgroup, you randomly select the entire subgroups. Halimbawa ng cluster sampling, mayroong 15 public elementary schools sa Imo City. Tapos, all with roughly the same number of teachers. Halimbawa, teachers yung mga respondents mo. So, they have the same uh, population ng number ng teachers. Then, wala kang kapasidad na mag-travel every school para kumulekta ng data. So, ang gagawin mo, instead of traveling with those 15 public schools, you will use random sampling to select 6 schools out of these 15 schools. So those 6 schools will be your clusters. So that is cluster sampling. The next type of sampling is the non-probability sampling. So when we say non-probability sampling, individuals are selected based on non-random criteria and not every individual has a chance of being included. So kung kanina doon sa probability sampling, lahat mayroong pag-asang mapili. Pagdating dito sa non-probability sampling, not every individual has a chance of being included. So this type of sample is easier and cheaper to access. Pero it has a higher risk of sampling bias. Ibig sabihin nito, yung inferences you can make about the population are weaker than with probability samples. And yung conclusion is more limited. If you use a non-probability sample, you should still aim to make it as representative of the population as possible. Non-probability sampling techniques are often used in exploratory and qualitative research. So yung kanina, yung probability sampling method, commonly used siya sa quantitative research. Pagdating naman sa non-probability sampling method, siya ay ginagamit pagdating sa qualitative research. In this type of research, the aim is not to test a hypothesis about a broad population, but to develop an initial understanding of small or under-researched population. So the first type of non-probability sampling is called the convenience sampling. Pag sinabi natin convenience sampling, it simply includes the individuals who happen to be most accessible to the researcher. Kung sino yung mas accessible, kung sino yung naanjan, siya yung pipiliin mo. Bawa, you are researching opinions about student support services in your school. So after each of your classes, you will ask your fellow students to complete a survey on the topic. Kung sino yung makita mo, you will ask them about that topic. So this is a convenient way to gather data. But as you only surveyed students taking the same classes as you at the same level, halimbawa, uh, lahat lang ng grade 10 kasi magkaiba yung ship, yung iba grade 7 pang umaga, then the sample is not representative of all the students at your university. So ang napili mo lang mostly is yung mga grade 10 students. So that is convenience sampling. The next type of non-probability sampling is called the voluntary response sampling. So when you say voluntary response sampling, it is similar to a convenient sample. A voluntary response sample is mainly based on ease of access. Instead of the researcher choosing participants and directly contacting them, people volunteer themselves. So, hindi na yung researcher yung mamimili. Meron na lang magbo-volunteer sa'yo to answer that survey. Pero, voluntary response samples are always at least somewhat biased. So, biased siya. Bakit? Kasi some people will inherently be more likely to volunteer than others. Halimbawa, you send out the survey to all students at your school and a lot of students decide to complete it. So this can certainly give you some insight into the topic. Pero dahil yung mga tao na nag-respond doon sa survey mo, ay likely na yun yung mga tao na merong strong opinions 
about the student support services. So you can't be sure that their opinions are representative of all students kasi sila yung nag-volunteer na magsagot ng survey about that topic. So that is voluntary response sampling. The third type of non-probability sampling is called the purposive sampling. When we say purposive sampling, this type of sampling is also known as judgment sampling. It involves the researcher using their expertise to select a sample that is most useful to the purposes of the research. So, madalas ginagamit to sa qualitative research where the researcher wants to gain detailed knowledge about a specific phenomenon rather than mix statistical inferences or where the population is very small and specific. So, masasabi natin na effective yung purposive sample if meron siyang clear criteria and rationale for inclusion. Example, you want to know more about opinions and experiences of disabled students at your university. So, ang gagawin mo, you will purposefully select a number of students with different support needs in order to gather a varied range of data and their experiences with student services. So, for post-pulli, ang pipiliin mo is yung mga students na merong support needs or yung mga disabled students kasi yun yung research mo. Next, let's have the last type of non-probability sampling which is the snowball sampling. So, when we say snowball sampling, if the population is hard to access, Snowball sampling can be used to recruit participants by other participants. Halimbawa, you are researching experiences of homelessness in your city. Since there is no list of all homeless people, wala ka namang listahan kung sino yung mga homeless people na yon in the city, so probability sampling is not possible. So ang gagawin mo, you will meet one person who agrees to participate in the research and she puts you in contact with other homeless people that she knows in the area.